What's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Play Basura 3. Alright, Yukimura's gonna easily take out Yoshishige there. But don't worry, young Ko, we're gonna come knocking on your door soon enough. Well, see you later, sweetheart. It wasn't your time. Ugh, you can keep him. <laughs> no care. All right, so that we're finally going to go take on Yukimura. Somebody I'd love to beat into the ground one day. But I guess now is not the time. Really, Lord Masamune? I'm going <laughs> to love Kodro's response there. And then we'll move on. Don't let him get to you. Stay calm. Yes, sir. He's like, I just just want to go kick his ass real quick and then we'll move on. It's not like I'm here to set any, settle any kind of rivalry or anything. You know me better than that. He's like, sure, boss. I'll take your word for it. Anyway, so in this episode, I really wanted to cover the rivalry between Yukimura and Masamune in the context of Basura's story, because that's not something I've really talked about up until this point throughout the series, even that's though in Basura 1 and 2, I'm sorry, in Basura 1, I played would. as both, Masa, both Masamune and Yukimura, and I didn't really talk about their rivalry except for the fact that it exists. So... The rivalry again was first founded in season one, where, well, uh, let me back it up a little bit and say, in context of the game, obviously these two are marketed as the rival characters because of this game's style and the almost like so Super Sentai style, um, just like the, the color coding this. and Clearly the way that they strike a pose when they yeah, first come into combat. It's really over the top like that, and. I think that was just kind of the style as we needed to have a sort of red and blue rival type characters. And it worked out. Their personalities are pretty much diametric opposites. And they both are, you know, young men within the Sengoku conflict that, even though they never met in real life, or never fought in real life necessarily, then it's, it still makes for a good, a good um, conflict within the, the fictional setting. Um, the... the the creator of Basura was very, very specific in saying that the stories in the Basura games were for entertainment purposes only, and that the Sengoku era itself was purely there as a theme and not as a narrative tool, so he never claimed any historical accuracy there. So anyway, um, in terms of the anime though, in season one, their rivalry is established almost immediately at that initial conflict with uh, Kawanakajima. And, uh, or am I thinking of season two? I don't know. So, uh, again, when, when, um, when Yuki, uh, Yukimura catches wind that Masamune is going to go intercept, um, what the hell is the guy's name that Nobunaga kills? You know what I'm talking about. Um, then that's when they have their first fight. That was the only part in the Basra anime that was animated really poorly, though. Otherwise, Production IG did a very good job, and the whole series is gorgeous, but there's a there's a scene there that, using my latest analogy with Fate Apocrypha, they go full studio trigger, and uh, they, it just looks ridiculous all of a sudden, and you, know, you lose several layers of the animation to give it this visual flair that didn't need to be there. But other than that, that's the only time that the animation gets painful in the Basra anime. So their rivalry continued uh, with... No shortage of homoerotic tension, which is part of the fangirl appeal of the Basra series, as you guys should know. Um, the majority of the audience, for the anime at least, in Japan is girls, because of all of the pretty boys and all the straight-up uh, gay subtext that turns into plain old gay text when we get to Basra The Last Party, the movie, where after many different interactions with the two characters over the course of the series, not uh, limited to... The very beginning of Basra Season 2, where they attempt to finish their rivalry, and Yukimura having his ass handed to him by a by a Masamune in his prime, uh, we uh, they, they separate for the rest of Season 2, and uh, for them to go on and do better things. Um, they had just come off of their partnership that en enabled them to defeat Nobunaga at the end of Season 1. And uh, now that... That's all said and done. You know, they go back to being rivals. And so they don't really see each other for that much of season two. And then by the movie, 
they're supposed to be, you know, figuring out the whole debacle with Seki Gahara, Ieyasu versus Mitsunari, and uh, they end up running into each other by accident. And they're supposed to be just passing through peacefully, and then Masamune is like, you know what? I just can't help myself. I look at you and I get all fired up. And that's exactly what happened, and they begin to have a completely awesome and ridiculous fight, which included Yukimura doing a backflip on his horse, like causing the horse to backflip. But anyway, what a sorry state you're in, Yukimura. You've, run, you've let this place go to shit. I expected better from the Tiger of Kai's successor. And if you look around, you can kind of see that that's the case. I've already talked about it before that the uh, the Takeda stronghold here is in a is in pretty rough shape, and um, you know we're, we are unleashing all these water ducks here and allowing the, the castle to flood and uh, cutting off him from his army. We're gonna go up here and fight Sarutobi Sasuke really quick, who is gonna be a complete pain in the ass and copy himself as he typically does, but he'll just be a stepping stone between us and the guy we really want to get to. Shadow Clone Jitsu, anyone? No use for you, so move. Unless, of course, you like me to I, I'm, I'm, before anyone asks, I'm honestly not a fan of Naruto. <laughs> I, I mean, get the reference, but I, I never really watched much of any of it. Anyway, so uh, I kind of wanted to talk about Masamune in terms of, um, well, let me kind of finish what I was saying about their rivalry. So, both of these characters, in the context of Basura 3 story and Judge End are kind of down and out. Like, Masamune just suffered a horrible defeat at the hands of Mitsunari, him and Kojiro both, uh, when going to go finish off Hideyoshi. And then Yukimura, again, in, in every adaptation of the Bowser 3 story, whether it be the movie, the series, or the game itself, um, is dealing with the death of Takeda Shingen. So, whether, depending on how Takeda Shingen decided to go out, <laughs> he went out in the most ridiculous way he possibly could have in the movie, which is very appropriate for the style and tone of the series, which, even though it's a scene that's played up for laughs, it still brings a tear to your eye. It's honestly very effective, and I love it. Um, so to see these two fight here is, is, is kind of unfortunate, because you know neither of them have a cool head. They both have something to prove. they got to get back up on their feet after finally... Um, you know, coming to a good personal resolve at the end of Season 2. Thankfully, uh, Masamune is not dealing with the whole, um, he's a Hide thing, because that's all been taken care of. Uh, not that we've seen the last of Matsunaga, he's a Hide. Um, <laughs> not to spoil anything from the next game. But anyway, um, so... In terms of real history with Masamune, so this is where I haven't really touched on this too much, but I figured I wanted to clarify some claims that I've made about Masamune. So Masamune actually lost vision in one of his eyes at a young age due to smallpox. And so uh, when he became an adult, he asked to have the eye removed. So there are claims that say he plucked it out on his own, and there are other claims saying he basically asked Gojiro to do it for him. But either way, um, he had been the One-Eyed Dragon for a long time, <laughs> but he gained that distinction of the One-Eyed Dragon of Oshu because of that uh, that decision he had made there. His first uh, campaign in battle was at age 15 under the, bu the banner of his father, whose name was... What the heck was his name? Uh, Datai Teramune, that's it. And so... After that, at age 17, he kind of succeeded his father under the Date banner. Um, as a kid, he was known as Bonten Maru and gained the title of Date Masamune uh, as an adult. So he remained pretty much neutral um, and was considered more of a of a you know rogue threat across the Warring States for the majority of the Sengoku era. But um, he did participate in a few really key battles, including uh, he actually served under or I guess on the side of Hideyoshi, believe it or not, in the fight against Hojo. So, uh, and then when, when Hideyoshi passed away, he was encouraged by Kojiro to side with Ieyasu, which again brings us to Basura 3 <laughs> and the Sekigahara thing where Masamune has allied himself with Ieyasu. Um, and believe it or not, actually, there's also a claim when Ieyasu was on his deathbed 
that Masamune came to his side and read him poetry, which I think is pretty cool to think about. Bastard. Ishida. And you are... Long time no see, Mitsunari. I was just heading your way. It must mean something approaching destiny to cross paths with you here again. I'm assuming you're here looking for an alliance with Yukimura. Which is great. That'll save me the trouble of going all the way to Osaka. Because right here... I'm gonna pay you back for last time. Good for you. Who are you? What? The hell? How many times must I say it? I don't know who you are. You bastard. You forgot about Odawara? Odawara. Difficult, yes, but in much better times. For Lord Hideyoshi, I fought that battle with everything I had to give. To this day, I still consider it an honor. During that time, there was a man whom I defeated. How could I remember his face now? Go away, you annoy me. Yukimura? Get out of here, Yukimura! No! I, Yukimura, cannot allow you to enter a friend in a way to castle! Defy me and face the consequences! Oh, yeah? Then let me go ahead and take care of you first! Let's settle this, once and for all! Kojiro, no interference. Well, we were just passing by to say hi, but now you've gone and pissed us off. We, you made it personal by protecting Mitsunari. Um, so yeah, again, I, I've never, I still do not agree with the fact that there's really any reason for Yukimura to side with him. And again, maybe I'm biased just because of the anime and the movie's story being my preference. But again, it just, it just seems like, it just seems wrong, <laughs> right? Like, it doesn't make much sense. I get that Yukimura is looking for guidance and that Ieyasu was... Um, you know, treated Takeda Shinken as his, as his uh, mentor and rival. So to see Ie Ieyasu succeed Takeda Shinken would be a, a uh, betrayal for Yukimura. I just, again, I don't see how... I don't see why he'd want to side with him. Anyway, we're going to put you down, Yukimura. So we've already done a crap ton of damage to him. There's really nothing he can do to survive this. We are going furiously all out. So we use our Buster attack, which allows us to transition into um, having all six of our Dragon Claws out, which is what War Dance would do if we had it. We use Crazy Storm a little bit there. I've been using Crazy Storm a bit all throughout this, this fight, as a matter of fact. He's getting ready to use his Buster attack, which we will allow him to do before we finish him off. Um, and then, as you noticed there, when I used uh, Cross Slash, while I had the um, all six of the Dragon Claws out, it gives you a slightly different animation. Masamune, that's enough. Kojiro, go away. I will not. This match is over. It's not over until this blade crosses Mitsunari's throat. You have to cease this all-consuming anger. I've tried to tell you. Do you truly wish to end this by killing Yukimura? Are you disobeying my order? I live for my vow. I swore that oath. I swore that I would never allow you to regret another decision. And if I fail in keeping to my word, then you may as well do as you please with my life. You and I will end this another time. Until then, you may live your life. Are you... Going after Mitsunari? Yeah, that is my intention. I too intend to defeat Iyasu. Even the dreams that come to me at night pain me knowing he is still out there. 
I look forward to the future, Masamune, when you and I will do battle again, and to a more fitting end. When and as you wish, Yukimura Sanada.